Hello and welcome to today's revision session on Weimar Nazi Germany 1918 to 1939 with a focus on key topic two, Hitler's rise to power between 1919 and 1933. Today's episode will be looking at part two, which is the Munich Putsch and the lean years between 1923 and 1929. Today's content will look at the reasons for, events and consequences of the Munich Putsch, including the long-term and short-term consequences, as well as the reasons for limited support for the Nazi party between 1924 and 1928, how Hitler reorganised the party after his release from that Landsberg prison, as well as the Bamberg Conference of 1926. So our first key event that we're going to be looking at is the Munich Putsch. First of all is to look at the idea of what caused the Munich Putsch in the first place. So a key element of this was that Hitler won the support of General Ludendorff, who was a war hero during World War I and was an extremely popular figure of the right wing. During the key topic one, we looked at the issue of hyperinflation during 1923. And because of the scar that this left on the Weimar government, Hitler saw this as an opportunity to try and take over. As one of the long-term causes, there was a long-term growth of the Nazi party by 1923. In November of 1923, the Nazis boasted about 55,000 members. In addition, 1923 saw the invasion of the Royal by French and Belgian troops, and there was a humiliation on the German side because of the idea that they could not pay the reparations set out by the Treaty of Versailles. So on to the events. On the 8th of November, Hitler and 600 Nazis seized a Munich beer hall, where right-wing leaders uh, General von Kahr, Seisser and Losso were speaking. After holding them at gunpoint, Hitler won promises of support from the leaders. However, the leaders were allowed to leave by Ludendorff and it led to two of them organising troops and police to resist Hitler's march through, through Munich. As a result of this, the Nazis were outnumbered and outgunned and 16 Nazis were killed with Hitler arrested two days later. In terms of the consequences, the, con the subsequent trial gave Hitler national publicity via the national press and he used the trial to put forward his political views. This tended to be more speeches rather than an interrogation, as the judges in the trial were sympathetic to Hitler's views, as they were quite nationalistic and right-wing. At the end of the trial, Hitler was found guilty of treason and was sentenced to five years, which was the minimum sentence for high treason at the time. However, he was allowed to leave prison after a nine-month period on parole. So the impact of the putsch on the Nazi party was that in the short term, they lost their leader because he was imprisoned and so their political support for the Nazis declined over the, over the short term. In the long term, however, Hitler's trial was a propaganda success for the Nazis as he was able to put himself onto a platform, onto a national platform and won support from other nationalists within Germany. In addition to this, Hitler realised that he needed complete control over the Nazi party and they also realised that, that trying to take power by revolutionary means would not work and that the Nazis would have to use legal means in order to gain power. So this, this led to a change of tactics and methods from the Nazis by trying to win elections rather than to take over by force. So there are a number of reasons for the limited support of the Nazis through the lean years or otherwise known as the wilderness years. First off, as we looked at in key topic one, the Dawes plan meant that Germany was able to be to be feel more economically stable. And so therefore Germans did not see the extreme left or the extreme right as a haven at this point because they were economically and politically state secure. Another reason was the anti-Semitic policies outlined in the 25 point plan. The Nazi messages did not really cut through 
um, in terms of making the juice scapegoats for all failures of Germany. These fell on deaf ears, again linked to the idea that there, there was economic and political stability in Germany during this period. As a result of Hitler going to prison, he was also banned from public speaking for a number of years and was not able to speak in public until 1927. It therefore severely impacted on the Nazi capability to campaign. As a result of all the above, the Nazis were pretty much on the fringe of, of politics up until 1928, with the 1928 elections only yielding 2% of the vote for the Nazi party which equated to around about 12 deputies in the Reichstag. During this period, Hitler embarked on a, on a relaunch and reorganisation of the Nazi party. Whilst in prison, he wrote Mein Kampf, otherwise known as My Struggle, and this was an autobi autobiography or manifesto of his thoughts and ideology. He ensured better financing for the Nazi party by securing money from big businesses such as Bosch, who were afraid of a potential communist or left wing takeover of the German government. As the Nazi party was regionalized in, in Bavaria and Munich at this point, Hitler decided to create regional branches in both the north, south, east and west of Germany. And he decided to shift his focus from urban voters to rural voters. The most significant event of this period would, would perhaps be the Bamberg Conference in 1926. This was where Hitler continued to strengthen his, leader, his position as leader of the party and to become the ultimate Fuhrer. There were two main rivals for Hitler, uh, for Hitler's position at this point in time. Joseph Goebbels, who comes to prominence in Key Topic 3, and Gregor Strasser. These two were vying for the leadership. However, Hitler decided to use them and put them into positions of power. For example, Goebbels was the Hauleiter, otherwise the leader of the regional party in Berlin. Another potential threat was Ernst Röhm and Hitler forced him to resign as leader of the SA as they were seen as too violent a group that would go against Hitler's method of trying to secure, um, to secure power in a democratic way. As a result of this, Hitler created the SS as his own private protection squad in order to replace the SA and have a clean break from them. He also introduced the Hitler Youth in order to rival other political youth groups. So in summary, the Munich Putsch was a short-term failure, but also a long-term success for the Nazi party. During the wilderness years, Hitler managed to relaunch the party and reorganize it in order to win elections rather than take over through revolutionary means. The reorganisation itself did not reap the rewards during this particular time period, due to the work of Stresemann's policies over the same time over the same time period, leading to economic and political stability in Germany. However, the Nazi Party was well financed, well financed, and was ready to take advantage of any failing of the Weimar government, which we will see in the 1929 to 1932 period. This ends today's episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more revision videos in the lead up to exams.